Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome to St. Tammany Regional Airport in Abita Springs, Louisiana. Today I'm going to do a short flight over to Madisonville where I'm going to land at the mouth of the Jefuncta River. And as you can see I have this seaplane here and along the way, I'm going to talk about, share some stuff about sailboats and, you know, some things that's happened to me. And we're going to fly over Mandeville, some of the marinas there, and the Mandeville Lakefront, and things like that on the way to Madisonville. All right, so let's go ahead and get aboard this plane and get it ready to go. All right, so from right to left, I remember on this plane, generator. Don't need panel lights. And hey, let me show show you the time first. Okay, uh, 2.55 p.m. It's actually kind of like a live time, but it's not live weather because you're not going to want to see a flight in that live weather. You know, trust me, it was raining, overcast. It was, looked terrible. <laughs> okay, so I got it set to... Just cloudy, all right? And uh, panel lights, we, we don't need that. We'll put a beacon nav. All right, so we'll let the Garmin boot up. And let's get a, our fuel selector. Left. And let's check our fuel quantity as well, because I'm bad about doing that sometimes when I do these short flights. Oh, I got enough fuel, and I just hop in and go, but no. We need to check those things, you know, so. Oh, yeah, 100%. But well, we don't need that much, though, at all. Okay, so that's good. I mean, we're just doing a short flight here, so we don't need to plane heavier than what, it, than what it needs to be. All right, mixture's rich, Rob. All right. Everything else is looking good. Let's get these doors open first before, you know, while we store up. And... All right. Clear prop. Get it stored up. Oh, wait, you know what? Right here. Start button. All right. Oh, we don't have a good start. There must be something that I left out here. It's been a little bit since I flew the plane. Let's let's go ahead and try it again. There we go. I was, I was wondering why it was kind of quiet. No worries. The engine runs good. It's been checked out. It's just... I didn't hold the starter switch down long enough. Okay. All right, let's get the doors closed. And we'll pull up the ATIS. Okay, well, I have, I'm going to have to tune into another airport, but let's just do the traffic for now. But I'm going to select the runway to take off. We got wind out, out of the south, so let's do runway 18. Announcement taxi. Lima Tree 1, Traffic Nardi, Golf Charlie Tango 1022 is taxiing to runway 18. And let's. Oh, well, let's leave. We can, well, let's do them out a little bit more so we can see a little bit better. All right. I mean, I know this area really good, so I'm not going to worry about. Um, I'm not going to worry about the uh, autopilot too much, you know, or Garmin and set that up. I don't need to. It's going to be all VFR. All right. Let's just turn out this way. A 
come around. I don't get too close to that. The guy standing here, you know. Now, this airport. Okay, about this airport. They were taking people up, you know, airplane rides. It was a. Uh, oh, that was back, I think, in 15 or 16. And I did take a little ride on a Cessna out of here before. And you can see the wind sock wind coming out of the south. So let me go ahead and get on down to the this end. I'm gonna go all the way to the end. This plane sometimes needs a little bit more room to take off compared to a lot of the stole planes I've been flying. Okay, I'm gonna hold short right here on the side and I'm gonna call the traffic and announce my takeoff. That water is really close to this runway, isn't it? All right, let's go ahead and call traffic. We're gonna be departing Basically to the east. No, I'm sorry, the west. Lima Tree 1, Traffic Nardi, Golf Charlie Tango, 1022, taking off runway 18 West Departure. Oh, I thought I set my brake when I stopped because I do that. I do that a lot. stop just short right here let it get some time to Fuck down. let's get all right let's get in the air now I like to let it get a little bit of speed, this one here, before I start taking off. Let's get our gear up. Start retracting the flaps a little bit. And as you can see, there's just a lot of woods around here right up to taking off in that airport. Let's get up the trim a little bit more. But it's nice and stable once you get it flying, once you get everything adjusted and trimmed out. Let's get a little bit higher here for sure. I'll trim that thing for climbing. But not that steep. Okay, so we're approaching the northern shore of Lake Pontchartrain. 
and you can see maybe see the, I think this is the causeway bridge and you can kind of see it a little bit right on here barely make it out but we'll see it more as we get a little closer and that below me that is I-12 turn out to the east and when I turn back to the west I'm going to fly along the shoreline there and we'll fly over Fountain Bloom State Park and things like that. And I'll just follow the shore if you look right here. I'm going to follow this shoreline right through here. We'll fly over the Causeway Bridge and we'll land up near the uh, Chifuncta River at the mouth of it. I'm at about 2,000 feet now, so we're going to kind of start coming back on throttles and our screws. Alright, so it's going good just like this. I'll probably crop my uh, trim a little bit. trim down a little bit more Alright, so here we are. We're going down along the shore here. And there is, I believe it's, I want to say it's Bayou Cane. I'm not 100% positive, but I want to say that's what it is. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, it is Bayou Cane. I have a kayak trip I did before from Bayou Cane to the Poch from I think this would be, I think this is it right here. Or maybe down the road further. I believe that's it. I had that on video on my channel as well from years ago. Maybe about you know, 14 years ago, 13, 14 years ago, I don't know, something like that. So I can put the link in the description if you want to check that out. But that's a long time ago. We kayaked down by you came and we went right up on. There's a little sandbar there. Right up there. And I think that's it right there. I'm pretty sure that's it. If not, it might be down a little further. Or is this it? No. Oh, this is the man of the lake, though. Okay, so yeah, let's go. You know, this bayou here, it has quite a bit of meaning to me, okay? I'm going to tell you why, all right? So let's see. And you can see the marinas here. This used to be Colbert Cove Marina. It's now JSBB Marina. And down a little further, that is Indian Landing Marina. Harrens Way Marina right here. And... 
I had my very first sailboat docked right here, Cobra Cobra Reef. And behind me there, that is Prieto Marina. And I, I was docked there at times too. Now, which is getting to what I want to talk about, okay? I bought my first sailboat in 2010. And it was a dream come true. It was a Cal 25. And I bought it from a guy who was selling it out here in Mandeville. And the day I got it, I went and did some stuff, a little bit of work to it, things like that, you know, and then I went right back the next day. And this was right around when the Saints won the Super Bowl, I believe. You know, like, like right around it, like a day before or something like that. But anyway, I was going to sail the boat over to the South Shore, to South Shore Harbor. And the weather wasn't the best that day. It was just, you know, it, there wasn't much wind and, and I didn't have a clue. I didn't even know how to raise a sail or do anything. And I'm thinking I'm gonna sail a boat across the lake, which is a friend who didn't know anything either. So probably not the smartest thing to do, but hey, we're gonna try it. We were gonna try it, all right? But anyway, I didn't do the sale there, so I decided to keep it over at the Mandeville Harbor. Okay, so the guy I bought the boat from after I purchased it, he was like, oh, you want me to put it back where it was at? I'm going to show you a spot I was keeping it down the bayou or just leave right here. When we used to leave right here, it was right here by the boat launch, just like right here. That's the yacht club. So, um, so no, we can just leave right here. Yeah, that'd be fine right here. Just leave right here. So it was that. Uh, I spent all evening, all into the night, working on it, just doing things, cleaning it up. And the next day I was at work. Okay. And I was at work, and I get a phone call from the guy who sold me the boat, and he's like. First thing I told him was like, "Oh yeah, I still need you to kind of sign, you know, send the documents over so I can get the, the title transfer and things like that." You know, and he said, "Oh, you should have everything you need." And then right after that, he actually goes, well, "Where's the boat right now? Let me ask you, where's it now?" Well, actually, he you know he called me. I'm like, "Oh, it's right there when we left out right after I purchased it." He's like, "Oh, because I got a call from the St. Tammany Parish Sheriff's Office. They said they found your boat against the Causeway Bridge. I'm like, what? What are you talking about, man? I tied it up. I had it docked right there by the lakefront. I was like, I don't know, man. I was like, I said, did they give the right numbers to the boat? Um, he's like, did you tie it up there? I said, well, yeah, I tied it up. And I knew I tied it up there. You know, I, mean, I wasn't going to let it you know, not tie it up well. But he's like, let me give him a call and see what's going on. And then, I think out the phone, I never heard from him anymore. Then I called up the, right, right after I called up the police department, and I said, are you sure that's my boat? Let me give you numbers. They said, yeah, that's your boat. So, that boat was found about eight miles out. You can kind of see the causeway bridge right here, against the causeway bridge. So, I had to pay a tow boat to pull it in, and it was not cheap, hundreds, okay, to pull that boat in, all right, and I just bought this boat, okay. Tow boat guy was like, okay, I don't think there's much damage, I don't think there's much damage on the boat, you know, but he was well, way wrong. And, and he also told me, yeah, it doesn't look like it came loose or nothing, it looks like the lines were just untied. So. Long story short, someone just kind of walked by and untied the boat. They just untied it and let it drift out, or maybe they untied it, thought they were going to take it out and go for a sale or something. And it wasn't working out too well because they didn't know what they were doing, and they maybe got off it and let it just drift out. And I had so much damage to the mast and the rigging on that boat. I called up North Shore Marine and had the guy come by and take a look. 
I had so much damage to this boat, it was no longer worth keeping. And, I, and me not being new to sailing, I didn't even know how to work on these boats back then. I didn't, I didn't even know how to raise a freaking sail, okay? So I didn't know jack shit about boats back then, about sailboats, sailboats. I have power boats have been around, new sailboats I'm talking about here. So I ended up, of course, having to sell the boat. I sold to somebody who was familiar with that model, the Cal 25. And I ended up with an old, really, really nice old day 22. It looked like it was brand new, really nice for just a little bit more than I paid for the Cal 25. And I had the best times in that boat. Until once when I went out in the lake with a friend, we were about, we were sailing to Madisonville to stay the night, Chifonka River. I left from right here my marina over cove went down the bayou out into the lake we were sailing you know wind was blowing we were sailing rolling good rolling good you know it was getting towards the evening now and it was like the sun was setting and it was about um, i would say about nine miles out or so wherever that first drawbridge is we pass under that sailing really really good you know and then I heard a big crack and that big crack was my rudder breaking. So when that happened, um, of course I had to drop all the sails and use the outboard motor to kind of steer the boat in, which sounds doesn't sound too big of a deal, but it was, you know. So it took a long time and it, it was really choppy out there it took a long long time and i finally made my way to the chifuncta river and was able to dock and stay the night at the marina but i didn't spend the night i came back and went back and i had my nephew the next day come with me and we sailed it back but we didn't use any sails but just like one maybe the main sail and still no rudder so we used the outboard motor in the main cell just to kind of steer our way back, you know. And we barely made it back because we didn't have much fuel. We thought we had a lot more than we did, but we didn't think, oh yeah, we're not going to use all that, but we did, you know, so yeah, it was, um, well, I find them getting new water for the boat, but it was, uh, other than that, I had some really fun times with that sailboat there, and that's where all of it happened. I just, I'd go out, you know, spent the night out here. A lot of these sailing videos are right here on my channel. If you want to go back and look, you're welcome to. They're all right there. And there are quite a few of them. You know, they 22 showing around all of them. And in 13, I ended up buying a Hunter 33 and that's really what things got interested in and uh, I kept the Hunter 33 out there at South Shore Hopper for a while and I, and I sailed across the lake a few times with myself and then I also I was living aboard out here with my fiance for about, no, about two years on that Hunter 33 and it was nice. I, would, I had time to work on and do things and keep it keep it up, because when with those big boats, when you don't spend time on them, they really go to help pretty quick. And I had some things happen on that boat too. And one day I'll make a video out of West End and I'll talk about some things that happened out of West End stuff like that. So here we are at the mouth of the Chifuncta River. Lighthouse is here. Or over there, I don't remember. I don't know if it's in Flight Sim or not. It might be. A lot of things are. It could be. No, I think that the lighthouse is right here. It's, it's on that, that little tiny peninsula right there. Let's see how high we are. We've gotten a lot higher, haven't we? Let's get this coming down. Put on zero because we're gonna get ready to land, okay?
and we had some clouds there, so. I don't think the lighthouse is represented here, but it should be. But you know what, I could, um, I've been trying to kind of look at scenery design myself because there is some things I would like to do. One of them is Sable Island. I would like to kind of enhance that and add some things on there. Most importantly, the wild horses that it's known for. If you know where Sable Island is at, it's off the coast of, no, it's out there in Nova Scotia, the coast of Canada. And I read a, a, quite a bit of stuff about Sable Island and I know that it's it's home to just wild horses. You see pictures of wild horses just kind of roaming the beaches. But when I go to it in flight sim, it doesn't. I mean, the shape is there and everything, but it looks like it needs more sand and things like that. Because Sable Island's pretty sandy. All right, so let's go ahead and get this plane dropping down to 15 flaps. If I land this way, I'm going to be landing downwind, so I might want to turn around. It descends pretty quick. I'm trying to keep my speed up a little bit. I kind of can keep about a hundred or so. Oh, I don't want me to get my landing gear down. How did that happen? <laughs> I must have hit the button. You don't need a landing gear down unless I want to destroy him in the water here and be stuck out here. choppy so it's oh you know we got a problem always oh, so forget these floaters let's get them down that's why my plane's leaning oh that's a big white cap there we go see the floaters I didn't drop down I always seem to forget those I didn't mean to kill my engine Issue here. Let me see what's going on. All right, here we go. Get this water run down, we're gonna have to be able to turn in here, right? It could have been a better choice to land like actually into on the river. All 
Alright, we're going to pull our flaps up, retract them. I suppose I could have did a crosswind landing, but if I would have done that, then it could have ended not so well. I don't know what's worse, being out here in this chop or being close there to the land doing a crosswind landing. I think I would take the second choice, but I obviously I went with the first. All right, so. There was more of a chop on that day when I lost that rudder on my old day Let me get a little closer and I'm going to drop the anchor. We really landed really far out, didn't we? We're basically just a boat right now. speedboat. Get a little closer to the mouth and I'm going to go ahead and drop that anchor. The mighty Lake Pachtrain. Sometimes it, the chop can be more of an issue out here than what it can be in the Gulf because the water is more shallow out here. And you have these white caps, you get a lot of white caps out here. Alright, not so bad up in here. Oh, that chop a little bit. Much calmer, as expected. And let's pull this reverser down as we get a little closer here. Well, I may not have to. I'll just kind of stop right here. Alright, so welcome to the Chifonta River. And let's drop back. Get the sinker down. switches off. It always 
let's take a swim to the shore right there. All right, so yeah, here we are. And when you go down there, down this way, to bump the river, there's a bridge right there, draw a bridge. And just on the west side of that drawbridge is a seafood restaurant called Orlando Seafood. Really, really good food. They used to have a all you can eat like catfish and shrimp there. Talk about good stuff. <laughs> really good. We used to go there quite a bit of times, you know. And this is another place that I had some spent some time kayaking in. You know. See that we're trying these all. I'll turn my battery off, but that, that'll bring the that'll retract these little lights here on its side, but that's fine. But yeah, so I have a video kayaking here. You know, we went down the Chifonka River launch somewhere like where that little building is at, like right here by the bridge on the other side. Went on out into the lake by the lighthouse, walked around all all up in it. All the way to the top. And then came back and went through one of these little waterways of bayous down there somewhere pretty nice trip all right so i hope you all enjoyed the flight in this video please smash the like button and drop a comment thanks for watching and until next time bye for now